one. Maria was born in London, which is in England, on the other side of the world. Her birthday was the 10th of October in 1845. This was 100 years before Nana Helen was born and 164 years before you were born, so it was a very long time ago. Maria's brother Richard and her sister Elizabeth were twins like you. They didn't have many toys. Perhaps Maria and Elizabeth had a couple of books. One rag doll each and a hoop. Richard may have had a small wooden boat. There weren't any te televisions for them to watch. It was nearly 100 years later that a man worked out how to make a television. There weren't even any radios. Nana Helen and Grandpa John didn't have a television when they were children, but they had a radio and they could go to the movies. There weren't even any movies when Maria was a little girl. Nana Helen and Grandpa John could go to the, the ballet like you, but in Ma Maria's time, the Nutcracker and Swan Lake and many other ballets hadn't even been written. Maria's house didn't have any electric lights that her mummy and daddy could turn on with a switch like you have at your house. No one's house had electricity, so nobody had any lights. Maria's mummy lit candles or burned some oil in a lamp so that they could see what they were doing at night time. The lamps and candles were not very bright, so their rooms were much darker than ours are today. Everyone was careful not to knock the candles over and cause a fire. In winter in England, where Maria's family lived, the nights were long and cold. Sometimes it snowed and at Christmas time the snowflakes made everything pretty. But sometimes a long time ago, when Maria was a little girl, the snow made everyone shiver. There weren't any air conditioners or heaters to keep Maria and her family warm, so Maria's mummy and daddy made a fire in their fireplace in their tiny lounge room. The warm crackling fire made Maria's family feel cosy. There weren't any washing machines a long time ago. Maria's mummy put all the dirty clothes in a big bowl in a big bowl called a copper, which sat on top of another fire in the in a room outside the house. The water in the copper boiled and made the clothes clean. Maria's mummy also cooked the family's dinner in saucepans on top of a fire in the kitchen. There were no microwave, microwaves, fridges or dishwashers. There were no supermarkets or takeaways like McDonald's and there were no delivered pizzas. When Maria and her brother Richard and her sister Elizabeth went out, they walked everywhere because everywhere because there were no cars or buses. A clever man named James Watt had worked out how to build a puffing steam train, but not many had been built. Those which did exist were slow, uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous. Sometimes, but not very often, Maria's family went out in the carriage and horses and they pulled them along. Only very lucky, lucky people who were rich enough to pay were able to ride in the carriage. I wonder if Maria wrote a story about those horse carriage rides so that other children could know what it was like to sit high up in the carriage and be pulled along by clip-clopping horses. There were no phones when Maria was a little girl, so Maria and her brother and sister couldn't call their friends or relatives to chat with them. <coughs> When Maria's family decided to invite friends who lived a long way away to visit, they wrote them a letter. Sometimes well over two weeks passed before the postman brought them another letter with a reply from their friends or relatives. You can, you can imagine how Maria and her brother and sister loved it when visitors came because it didn't happen often.